Greetings motion peeps, now the time has come for us to make our jelly look like jelly. So put on your wetsuits and take a deep breath so we can uh, dive in. Right, welcome back to the ocean. I've created a bit of a, an environment here. I've got some depth caustics and a soft gradient for background and it looks a little bit like an ocean. And in here we have our jellyfish, slowly blobbing along its spline. Blob. Blob. And I've slightly tweaked it, as you can see, I've got these uh, outer edges. I've turned those into generating circles, which is basically just a circular sweep. I've got the inner tentacles, which I've made a bit longer. And then I have these, um, these tentacles in between, which are really long, just uh, generating another sweep, which is just sweeping a circle. That's what our jellyfish is at right now. And it looks pretty enough like this, but when I render it, it doesn't look that pretty at all. I think we need to add some materials, some uh, nice shading to this, make it look a bit more like jelly. So let's start off with a new material. Let's start with uh, changing the color. I want the color to be completely white because I want this material quite simple. Next up, I'm actually going to create transparency. Check that. And this is where most of the action is going to happen. Just turn it down by a couple of percent and set the refraction up to 1.01 .01. see what that looks like on our jellyfish just smack it on top do a quick render and it certainly looks a bit more like jelly let's apply that to the tentacles as well looks a bit ghostly doesn't it it does need a bit more substance especially around the edges i think so i'm going to create a layer shader in the transparency and add a gradient to that in the material preview, we see that it's uh, the wrong way around. So if I right click on the gradient, I can choose invert knot. And then I just want to move down the white knot closer to the black knot. So it's just a bit more opaque right around the edges. Then I'll turn the black knot into a bright grey knot. So it's not completely opaque around the edges. Now our jellyfish is a bit more visible, but it looks a bit dull. I think we need some more details. So I'll create a noise shader in this layer shader. The noise type, I want to be set to Voronoi 1, because that's going to look a bit like bumps. Then I'll go ahead and just turn the white clip down to somewhere slightly below 50%. And of course, let's turn the global scale of the noise down, so we get a few more bumps, a few smaller bumps. Back in our layer shader, I'm going to set the noise transfer mode to multiply, so we just get the dark bit, and then I will turn down the opacity to about 50%. I should have a render to the Yee picture viewer, so we can see what it looks like. Don't know if you can see this after the YouTube compression, but our jellyfish is now dotty. Let's go back into the material and rename it Jelly. Now we're going to do the main magic. We're going to add something I rarely use because it really fucking drains your render times. We're going to add blurriness to the transparency. I'll turn mine to 37%, but it probably looks good with a bit less as well. Let's go to Reflectance, disable the standard specular, and in our transparency reflection, let's turn up the blurriness. I'm just going to set that one to 10%. Next step is to add not subsurface scattering. Let's turn on the luminance channel. And in texture, I'm going to add from effects, the backlight effect is essentially subsurface scattering, but for objects without volume. Like if you hold a piece of paper up against the sun and then you wave your hand behind it, you can see the shadow of your hand on the piece of paper. I'll keep the standard algorithm, but for the illumination strength, I want that 75 and the shadow strength slightly higher. I'm going to put that to 95 so we get strong shadows. Let's do another quick render. That looks quite good. It's light and airy, but it's a bit too light and airy because I forgot to do a thing. In the transparency channel, I want to set the uh, mix mode for the texture to multiply. And then let's render that again and see the difference. Right, so there we go. Now it's a little bit more opaque. It looks kind of milky, but in a good jellyfish-like way. Still needs more detail though. And for that, we need Photoshop. I'll see you there. So this is what Photoshop looks like. I've got a document with some guides to mark out the center point, and I'm just going to create a new layer here. Create a layer mask for that layer, fill the layer with white, and then invert the layer mask. 
and I'm going to select a very small brush, two pixels with a high hardness and with say 50% opacity. And then I'll start drawing some lines and these lines in my mind are going to be veins on the jellyfish or if they have veins, I don't know if they do, but my jellyfish does anyway. So I'll just go through and um, draw these lines. Consider these lines drawn. Now we have this network of veins. I think that's enough for a jellyfish, but I want to give them a slightly different look. Let's first duplicate the layer and turn one off so we don't lose anything. And then to the layer mask, I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur. I'm going to keep it quite low. I'll set that to two pixels as well. Hit return. Then I'll bring up some levels for that layer mask and just really crush the high points and slightly crush the low point as well. And you should be able to see that they start looking a bit more like a neural network now because they're a bit thicker at every point where two lines intersect. I like it. It's a nice look. And I think it's going to look extra nice when I make this bioluminescent in the next tutorial. Right, so this is good. I'll save this up and uh, then I'll see you back in Cinema 4D again. Back home in Cinema 4D. Let's add these uh, veins to the jellyfish. Start by creating a new material. I'm going to make the color completely white. And then I want to add another backlight to the luminance. For this one, I want the illumination high, set that to 90, and the shadow quite low, set that one to 50. Reflectance, don't want any of that. Alpha, want all of that. In the texture channel, let's load up our recently created veins. Now let's rename this material. I'm going to call this one veins before applying it to the connect object. Before we do a render of this, we need to make sure that the um, texture is projected properly onto it. By default, the projection is set to UV mapping, but our object is still procedural, so it's not UV mapped. So we want to change that projection to flat. And when we then select our connect object and make sure our transform tools are in texture mode, this button here, when we then disable our deformers, we can, let's jump out of the camera, we can transform the projection of our textures so it's projected the right way around. Right now from the side, so let's just spin it around and there we go. Now it's projected from the top down. And if we go into the coordinates of our texture object, we can see that those have changed too. And in here, I'm actually going to scale down the texture a bit. I think that looks like a good fit. So now a really important step is to add to our connect object a so-called stick texture tag. And with that one, we just want to press record. What the stick texture tag does is that it records the position of your jellyfish right now and then when we turn back on our deformers, our textures aren't going to slide around on our jellyfish, they're actually going to deform with it. So if we do a quick render now, moving really close, we have all of our lovely veins on the jellyfish. Nice, but it's still missing its inside and for that we need another trip into Photoshop. Back in good old Photoshop, I've got a document with a black background and then a circle for reference. And I'm just going to create a new layer, make it completely white, add a layer mask and invert that one. And then um, start just uh, painting away some shapes on that layer mask, just however I want the inside of the jellyfish to look. It's not really that important to keep this perfect, so I'll just uh, do some really rough simple shapes. Alright, so now I finally have a shape I'm happy with. Uh, I think I can leave it like this. So now I just need to save it out and bring it into Cinema 4D. I'm here in Cinema 4D again. To do these innards, I will just copy the veins material, rename that innards, and simply replace the alpha channel with our freshly created inside. Just like that. And then I'll also, on our connect object, make a copy of the veins material and replace that material with our innards material. For this texture though, I want to change this sides option. So instead of saying both, this should be back. That way we don't see the innards on the front of the jellyfish, we only see it through the jellyfish on the inside of it. Certainly, if we do a render, we can see it barely makes a difference. 
But that's just because we're viewing it from the side. If we see it from the top, from the bottom, it's going to make a massive difference. Because right now it just looks like it's slightly brighter. Speaking of brighter, I think I want to make our jellyfish a bit brighter. At least around the edges, because I think it still looks a bit dull around the edges. I'm going to go into our transparency channel, go into the layer shader and copy this Fresnel that we have. And then I'm going to paste that into the texture of our color channel. I'm going to go into the Fresnel. Well, I'll turn the grey knot into a completely white knot and I will turn the white knot into a black knot. Then I'll set the texture blending mode to additive. And in the material preview you can see that it does lighten up the edges. So now when we do a render, let's uh, make sure we do one from the top so we get our lovely insides. This angle looks good, so when that's rendered, we see that adding some inside detail really does make it look a lot more like a jellyfish. Something else that's going to make it look a lot more like a jellyfish, which we'll do in the next tutorial, it's really going to make it shine because we'll be doing bioluminescence. But until that tutorial, I hope you stay in motion and uh, don't get lost in the ocean. Bye,